All right, thank you everyone for being here. Um, my name is Peter Geisert. I'm with the Oregon EMS and Trauma Data Team. And um, <clears throat> we wanted to uh, reach out to folks uh, to talk about something that's been on our mind, and I'm sure it's been on yours as well. As many of you know, uh, the national data standard is update, being updated to NEMSIS 3.5, and uh, we wanted to talk a little bit today about specifically what that's going to look like as far as the rollout in Oregon, as well as what you can expect as an agency. Um, next slide, please. So the agenda for today, um, we're going to talk about what has happened with the development of NEMSIS 3.5 so far. And then we're going to talk about what those next steps are. And then um, uh, uh, what precisely is changing, some of the major data elements that will be shifting with uh, implementation of NEMSIS 3.5, the uh, uh, patient disposition, incident and patient dispositions, the lists uh, in the state data set, and uh, integration with other healthcare data, and specifically the implementation of the unique, universally unique identifier, um, and changes to validation rules as well. Um, and then we'll cover the impact that this will have on your data entry forms, um, and talk about how you can contribute and uh, participate in the process of implementation as we go forward. Um, next slide, please. So first off, um, we um, have a few questions throughout the presentation, and I'm going to drop a link here into the chat. Um, and if you click on that link, it will take you to uh, uh, the Poll Everywhere site where you can uh, answer this question. So the question is, how much have you heard about NEMSIS 3.5 from your, your vendor? Um, and so uh, uh, if you can, we'll give you a couple of minutes to uh, go to the website and respond. And then we'll be able to see your responses come up here on the screen in real time. And so this is all very good information for us. I think um, understanding better, you know, where folks are coming from, both for this presentation, but in general for uh, the communications that we're going to be doing around NEMSYS 3.5. Peter, I forgot to set this poll to give us counts, it gives us percents instead. So, but uh, what 14% means we've got, I don't know, Eight responses so far, something like that. Sounds Seven about right. Yeah. Currently, you have eleven attendees. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I think we're definitely, uh, you know, seeing that um, uh, a lot of folks have fairly limited knowledge about what's coming with Nemesis three point five. Uh, in some cases, just knowing that it's on the horizon. Uh, and and when we can expect for that to, to happen. Um, and so thank you very much for participating. Um, next slide, please. So as far as the development of NEMSIS 3.5 so far, uh, it was two, in 2019, NEMSIS 3.5 was finalized and published. So that's just the, the, the data standard, but uh, COVID-19, um, impacted everyone, including software vendors and, you know, uh, state health departments and EMS and trauma programs. Um, and so uh, that slowed down the uh, implementation of NEMSYS 3.5. So today, vendors are developing their NEMSYS 3.5 uh, compliance, uh, compliance capabilities. 
um, and they're getting certified with the NEMSIS TAC. Um, so if you're interested in looking to see who, uh, if your vendor is currently NEMSIS 3.5 compliant, um, there is a, uh, a web page that you can visit, and I'm going to drop this into the chat. Um, can everyone see that? Okay. And uh, Josh just navigated to the page. Um, so as you can see here, there's a pull down menu to select which version of the NEMSYS data standard you want. You're go going to want to select NEMSYS 3.5. And then as you scroll down on the page, you can see what products uh, are NEMSYS compliant, have been uh, 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 approved as NEMSYS compliant. And additionally, there's a, a table at the bottom for ones that are currently in process of uh, gaining compliance. Um, so second, secondly, uh, there are published um, plans for state implementation of uh, NEMSYS 3.5. Um, and I'm going to drop that into the chat as well. And um, you can see here, uh, Josh is showing where it uh, lives on the NEMSYS website. Um, but this, this list is kept up to date. Um, and you can see, um, uh, so it's got a software vendor tab um, for when the vendors plan to be compliant, as well as when, st when uh, state plan to make the transition to NEMSYS 3.5. So uh, nationally, the, um, the next steps, uh, so there's, we're, we're um, coming to the, the point where uh, uh, most vendors have implemented uh, NEMSYS 3.5. Um, and uh, the implementation will happen agency by agency, um, but uh, it will be continuing until the beginning of 2024, which is when NEMSYS will stop accepting NEMSYS 3.4 data. Um, so that said, we have a plan to do this in Oregon. Um, so coming up very soon, um, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So Image Trend Elite, which is the software product that we use for ORMSYS, um, was certified as NEMSYS 3.5 compliant in December. And uh, we will be upgrading to NEMSYS 3.5 in ORMSYS. Um, and as part of that effort, we're going to be um, <clears throat> updating all of the state resources, the data element lists, uh, validation rules, uh, data entry forms, as well as the EPCR uh, printable PDF reports um, that uh, are used in the system. And we're going to work with each agency to uh, uh, manage the transition to NEMSYS 3.5. And uh, on the next slide, there's a, a brief timeline that shows some of our goals and what we're, we're going to be doing as part of that effort. Um, so up through um, we're, we're currently in a planning and communication phase, um, and uh, uh, on July 1st, um, ORMSYS will begin accepting NEMSYS 3.5 data, and at that time, we're going to start transitioning agencies that use the state image trend system, um, and simultaneously, we will be reaching out to and working with uh, agencies that use third-party vendors and uh, the third-party vendors themselves to prepare to begin transitioning those third-party uh, EPCR users starting in October. Um, and so the goal is to have these sort of two staggered uh, six-month periods of, of agency transition. So for agencies that uh, uh, we, we would like each agency to have a plan for when they're going to transition to NEMSYS 3.5. Um, and the deadline that we've set out for that is December 31st of this year. Um, and so this is to put us on track to achieve the goals that we've set for implementing, 
uh, which is that by July 1st of next year, we would like to have 90% of agencies transition to NEMSIS 3.5. And by December 31st, uh, we would like 100% of agencies to be transitioned. And as, as a reminder, uh, the end of 2023, that is the, the um, when NEMSIS will stop uh, accepting the NEMSIS 3.4 data. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So um, uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Josh Legler. All right, thanks, Peter. Uh, my name is Josh Legler. I work on contract with the Oregon Health Authority as a consultant to help with EMS data. And Peter has asked me to um, give you an overview of some of the highlights of things that are changing as we move to NEMSIS 3.5. So I'm going to highlight four topics. Uh, changes to how you record your incident and patient dispositions on your calls. Changes to validation rules. Changes to long lists. We'll explain that a little. And how Nemesis 3.5 uh, is better able to integrate with other healthcare data. So let's start with incident patient disposition changes. Nemesis 3.4 has a data element called incident slash patient disposition. That data element has 22 choices on it, and it is being retired. It's being replaced by four new elements in NEMSIS 3.5 to capture your unit disposition, the patient evaluation and care, your crew disposition, and the transport disposition. As four separate elements, each of those elements will have a much shorter list of choices. The idea here is to more accurately capture the disposition of a call and at the same time, make it easier to find uh, what what you're looking for on the list. Instead of having to wade through a list with 22 choices, which is the list you see here in Nemesis 3.4, and picking out the one that you want, and you know most of the time that's gonna be patient treated and transported by the CMS unit, which is just kind of in the middle of the list. Instead, you will see four different data elements, but with much shorter lists. And the most commonly chosen disposition will be the first choice on each of those lists. So um, to indicate a call where you treated a patient and you transported them, um, you would be able to just pick uh, patient contact made for unit disposition, patient evaluated and care provided for patient evaluation and care. For crew disposition, you initiated and continued primary care. And for transport disposition, you transported by the CMS unit with this crew only. So the idea here, again, is that uh, you're able to find the choice you're looking for more quickly because each list is shorter. So even though we're replacing one element with four elements, uh, the plan here is to be able to complete this section of your PCR more quickly by having less to look through um, and more accurately. And we're gonna draw up some scenarios here where we can uh, illustrate how you can um, uh, complete your report more accurately and quickly um, in regards to your disposition. So we're going to be using Poll Everywhere again, and we're going to run through three scenarios. This is the first scenario. You treated the patient and you transported her from the scene to the hospital in your unit. So a very common, uh, EMS, the most common EMS scenario. And the question we're going to ask is, what was the incident patient disposition for your call? First, we're gonna ask you to pick the right disposition in NEMSIS 3.4. And then we're going to show you the four different elements in NEMSIS 3.5 and have you pick the right choice or the choice you think is right for each of those four elements. So we'll get a little practice here with filling out dispositions in NEMSIS 3.5 compared to 3.4. All right, so here we go. Here's our first um, question. You treated the patient and transported her um, from the scene to the hospital in your unit. So you'll be able to pick A through V from among all these tiny choices here for Nemesis 3.4, what you would record if you treated the patient and you transported her from the scene to the hospital in your unit. So Josh, this is a good uh, segue for a question if you're ready for it. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, Derek is asking, what would be the best choice for fire agencies that do not transport and hand off patient care to a transport agency? 
Uh, that'll be one of our scenarios. Ah, so, so we'll stand by. Okay. Um, then it appears uh, Jason said the website still shows the previous question. Jason, let me know if that is not the case now. Yeah, hopefully I got that fixed. Yeah, thank you. So let me uh, repost the poll again for responses. Okay. Let's see if that works. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click on the new link that just appeared in the chat. Okay, now they're coming in. So great, we got six, seven responses so far, eight responses now. Okay, so the majority of you picked uh, treated and transported by this EMS unit, which uh, would be the appropriate choice in NEMSIS 3.4 when you treated a patient and transported them in your own unit to the hospital. Okay, let's try this now in 3.5 with the new structure. So we'll have four elements that we're going to run through here, but each one will have a shorter list of choices. Okay, so what was the unit disposition of your call? Did you make contact with the patient or were you canceled on scene or prior to arrival? No patient contact, no patient found, or it was a non-patient incident. Oops, and I guess I forgot to switch this one to numbers instead of percents too. And now I'm not going to know how many of you answered because I have this switched to percents. Let's see if I can fix that quickly on the fly or not. Well, you do have four oh, responded. Good. There we go. Okay. So uh, all of you picked patient contact made, which would be the right uh, way to record that in Nemesis 3.5. Now let's look at uh, the um, patient evaluation and care data element. So you treated the patient and transported her from the scene to the hospital. Which of these choices would you pick? And while you're answering those, let me switch that over to numbers as well. Okay, and that is correct. It would be patient evaluated and care provided. Okay, next. One, if I can get to the next slide here, there we go. The crew disposition. So this is, you know, what what ended up with in, in regards to your crew. So either you initiated and continued primary care or you transferred care to someone else, you provided support, you took care from someone else um, or support services. Get those switched over to counts as well. There we go. Okay. Yep. Initiated and continued primary care. Okay. And the last one, your transport disposition. Okay, yeah, absent any other information that I would have given you, I just said you treated and you transported the patient. So transport by the CMS unit, this crew only. So that's scenario number one, just the super common scenario that you're gonna have on most of your calls if you work for a transporting agency. Let's go ahead and move on to scenario number two now. We're gonna answer the same questions over again. Scenario number two is that you evaluated the patient uh, the patient needed treatment, the patient needed transport, but the patient refused treatment and transport. Okay, so you did an evaluation, they definitely needed treat, treatment and transport, but refused it. Okay, so this will get a little stickier in Nemesis 3.4. Let me um, clear out the uh, initial responses from the last scenario, there we go. And we're gonna re-answer this one from a Nemesis 3.4 perspective. 
uh, what would you pick from this list of choices? All right, so first thing I see is it took a little longer uh, to come up with the right, uh, what you would pick in this one uh, after looking through this uh, long list of choices. And yeah, it kind of boils down to these two where they, they refused evaluation and care, but the problem is you did evaluate the patient, right? And so then the other option is treated and released AMA, but you didn't really treat the patient. So it's, it's pretty hard to pick the right answer here in 3-4. So let's move to Nemesis 3.5 and uh, see how it would look. Okay, so let me get this one reset. Okay, so uh, you evaluated the patient. So that was pretty quick, right? Everyone recognized patient contact was made. Let's move on to the next uh, element, um, patient evaluation and care. Let me get this one reset and go ahead. So we can see already in Nemesis 3.5 with this scenario, um, there's a much clearer choice here that the patient was evaluated um, but refused care. Okay, let's take a look at the next uh, element, which is the crew disposition. Let me get this one reset. Okay, so uh, treatment and transport was needed. The patient refused treatment and transport. Okay, yeah, so in 3.5, we're building the picture that we know we had a patient, um, we know that they needed care, um, but they refused the care. So our crew went back in service after evaluating the patient. Okay, and finally, transport disposition. Let me reset this one and tell us what you think for transport disposition. Yeah, pretty straightforward on this one, right? We know that they refused to transport. Great, okay, let's run to the third scenario now. Scenario number three looks like this, and this is the one that was brought up in the chat question. You're a paramedic who treated the patient. Your agency doesn't transport. You rode on the transporting agency's ambulance to the hospital while continuing to manage patient care and then you transferred patient care to the hospital staff. Okay, so you show up on scene, you treat the patient, you hop in the back of someone else's ambulance with the patient, and you go to the hospital in that other agency's ambulance. Let's see what this scenario is gonna look like. Starting out with Nemesis 3.4, we clear the poll here. Okay, and go ahead and look through those choices and see what you would pick for this case where you treated the patient and you rode in someone else's EMS unit to the hospital.
Yeah, this one's taking a while to figure out. So the ambiguity here, as you see, is between P and Q, right? You, you could say you treated and transferred care to another EMS unit, but you didn't really transfer care. You kept caring for the patient while they were in the other unit. But then if you say treated and transported by this EMS unit, you're implying that your unit transported them, that maybe your vehicle transported them. And, and either, way, either way, you feel like you haven't really answered the question correctly. Um, and it gets pretty tough. Let's see what this will look like in 3.5. So let's uh, move on to 3.5. Let me uh, clear the responses here. Um, so you treated the patient, your agency doesn't transport, you rode on the other ambulance and so on. Great, so unit disposition, super easy. You know, you made patient contact. Let's take a look at the transport, or sorry, patient evaluation and care. Let me uh, reset this one. Okay. So this one was also super clear. You know that you evaluated and, and you provided care. Okay, let's move on to the crew disposition. Let me reset this one. All right, go ahead. What was your crew disposition? I guess I should have mentioned in the scenario, you were the first crew to show up to the scene. Okay, interesting here. The scenario says that you rode on the transporting ambulance agency, uh, transporting agency's ambulance to the hospital while continuing to manage patient care. And then you transferred patient care to the hospital staff. So we saw a few answers change. And yeah, the, the disposition in 3.5 would be that you initiated and continued primary care, that you, you held on to primary care of the patient through the entire EMS call until the end of the call. So even though you rode on the other agency's ambulance, you didn't transfer care of the patient to that crew. All right, let's look at the transport disposition for the final one here. Clear those responses and go ahead and pick what you would think would be the appropriate transport disposition. So here's where we can see a big difference between 3, 4, and 3, 5, that 3.5 gives us this really specific choice that allows us to say that the transport was done by another unit, but our crew member was on that unit uh, during the transport. Um, so we continued to be with the patient, even though it was in someone else's ambulance and makes for a, a much cleaner um, report of what actually happened on the call. Okay, thanks everyone for uh, participating in those um, scenarios. I hope that that was helpful to see um, how, even though we're replacing one element with four elements, they should be easier to answer, uh, easier to find the answer you're looking for, and should be more accurate than what we had in Nemesis 3.4. Okay, there are uh, three other topics, uh, high level, that are changing um, in Nemesis 3.5 just for you to be aware of, we are going to be making changes to validation rules. Um, we're actually gonna to try to keep these as consistent as possible with what we currently have in Oregon's system in Nemesis 
we have to make changes to the rules because we have some data elements that are changing. So for example, incident patient disposition, that element's going away. There are lots of data validation rules that are triggered off of that element. So we have to replace those rules with similar rules that are based off of the new elements for disposition in Nemesis 3.5. Uh, so for example, we have one that says transport mode from scene should be recorded when the incident patient disposition is either one of the values that says with transport or it's pa uh, patient treated and transported by this EMS unit. We have to rewrite that rule for Nemesis 3.5 so the rule, the intent of the rule will be the same. The wording will be a little different. In this case, it'll be simpler. Uh, we'll say transport mode from scene should be recorded when the transport disposition is transported by this EMS unit. So because we're uh, replacing the one complicated element with four simpler elements in 3.5, we're able to write a, a little bit simpler validation rule. Um, but the same overall constraint is, is being enforced in that rule. So those are the kinds of changes you'll see to validation rules. Not really much in the way of new stuff. There will be a little bit, but mostly just a rewriting of rules to um, be uh, so that they'll work with uh, the changes with the data elements in Nemesis 3.5. Okay, third area of change. We just called this long lists for lack of a, a better word. Uh, the NEMSYS Technical Assistance Center maintains what are called some suggested lists for things like symptoms, impressions, injury causes, and a few others. And I'm sure you've noticed as you're doing your patient care reports, if you look at the list for symptoms or one of these others, it's a pretty long list, maybe a hundred or so choices on the list to um, look through. And uh, historically, those lists have been maintained using what was really just a statistical approach. In other words, the NEMSYS Technical Assistance Center looked at all the data coming into the national database, and they looked at what codes were being submitted for symptoms, for example. And whatever ones were the, the most commonly used codes, those were the ones that they put on their suggested list. So they kind of just said, hey, everyone across the country as a whole tends to be using these codes the most. So these are the codes we're gonna recommend that everyone across the country use. There are a few limitations with that statistical approach. Um, one is that it's purely retrospective. And so what happens is you never get new codes added that become important. And that came up during the COVID-19 pandemic where we needed to add symptoms and impressions um, especially impressions to say that um, the patient had a coronavirus infection. Well, that never showed up in the historical data because nobody had coronavirus infections in the past, but we needed to add that code in because you were soon going to have a lot of patients with coronavirus infections. And so that clinical perspective was really important, but missing from that retrospective statistical approach. Um, also, what we see is sometimes there are values on the list that are very similar to each other. And it's just that a bunch of agencies in the country picked one code and a bunch of other agencies picked the other code, but the two codes really aren't that different from each other. So we end up having both of them on the list recommended by the, the NEMSYS TAC, even though they're kind of redundant with each other. So that needs to be cleaned up as well. And lastly, it was missing the billing perspective, the perspective that says, hey, when we send the bill, what codes are important and what codes are accurate and precise enough uh, for the biller to be able to create a bill. So going forward, the NEMSYS TAC is going to uh, not only use that statistical approach, they're going to have an expert group uh, with expertise from clinical operation and billing perspectives to refine uh, the lists for these various data elements. You're not gonna see that right away. So like as you first transition to Nemesis 3.5, the lists are just gonna look the same as they did before. Uh, what we're expecting is that over the next year or two, um, those refinements are going to be uh, published by the Nemesis TAC. And in Oregon, we will review and process and, and implement those refinements to these lists. So the idea is to get these better and better over time. So they better match what you need 
uh, to report on your EMS calls. Okay, the fourth uh, overall area uh, that we wanted to highlight with the changes in 3.5 is better integration with other healthcare data. Uh, this is happening in a few ways, but the one we wanted to focus in on was the introduction of something called a universally unique identifier. Every patient care report that you create using the NEMSIS 3.5 standard will have an auto-generated unique ID attached to it. And it uses a particular algorithm so that software um, products all across the country can all be being used at the same time as each other, creating patient care reports, and they will never uh, have a scenario where two different software products creating two different patient care reports end up generating the same universally unique identifier for their reports. Uh, it's virtually guaranteed not to happen. So each patient care report gets this unique identifier attached to it. It's a what's called a meaningless identifier. What I mean by that is that that identifier itself has no way of identifying an actual patient or an agency or anything kind of in the real world. It's just a unique identifier for your patient care report. So here's what can happen with that. This example we're showing here is from the trauma registry world, but this will apply to um, uh, other uh, areas as well in integrating with hospital data or other areas of healthcare. So whether it's, it's a STEMI um, or, or a stroke or cardiac arrest registry in the future or whatever else, uh, this same concept can apply. So what happens here is EMS creates uh, a patient care report. And in 3.5, that patient care report has that unique identifier attached to it. In this scenario, a trauma registrar using the trauma registry, they search for EMS reports that have been submitted. And in the, in the state of Oregon, the way things have been set up is that if you submit a patient care report and you mark that possible injury was yes, then your report gets sent to the trauma registry into a database for trauma registrars to query. The trauma registrar will look for reports in that database using the patient's name and birth date uh, and the date that the patient arrived at their hospital. And they're gonna find your patient care report uh, and they may find the patient care reports from a couple other uh, crews who treated that same patient at the same incident. They'll import your patient care report into the trauma registry. In fact, they do this today. All of that's in place. What'll be new in NEMSIS 3.5 is that your report will come in with that UUID attached to it, the unique identifier. And the trauma registrar, when they fill out their trauma report, that unique identifier will go into their trauma report as well. When they send their data up to the state and eventually the national trauma data bank, there's no information about the patient. The patient's name, the patient's birth date, all of that is gone, it's stripped out. But the unique identifier from your patient care report is embedded in their trauma record. Well, when your patient care report comes into the state system and then goes up to the NEMSIS EMS database, same thing. When it goes to the national database, patient identifiers get stripped out. We no longer know the patient's name, birth date, et cetera. Um, and what that means is it's not really possible in the national databases to know which trauma record matches which NEMSIS uh, patient care report. Well, with NEMSIS 3.5, it will be possible because the unique ID from your record will flow up to the national database. Both national databases will contain the UUID from your patient care report. So that means that all the way at the national level, a trauma record can be linked to the EMS record that represents the transport that came into that trauma facility. So even though all the patient identifiers have been removed, we can still link the two records back up at a national level and then use those um, for research to understand trauma outcomes on your patients. Again, this will apply to any other uh, registry that you might uh, think about. They'd be able to leverage this UUID to uniquely identify the patient care reports there uh, that are uh, that they're trying to match up with hospital records. I will reiterate though that this all depends on 
a manual step here of a trauma registrar or some other registrar or someone in a hospital finding your EMS report and saying, this is the report that gets attached to this hospital record or trauma record. There is still that process of manually matching them up, but once that's happened, then that UUID flows through the rest of all of those systems. So that's um, just high level four kind of key highlight areas of changes in Nemesis 3.5. There's lots of other detailed areas that are changing, but we thought these would be the ones that would be of most interest to you. Okay, Peter, back to you. All right, thank you, Josh. <clears throat> so uh, we wanted to discuss what impact this was going to have uh, for you all as EMS agencies or EMS uh, providers. And um, there's a number of critical areas that this is potentially going to have an impact or is going to require some, some action uh, at your agency. Um, so one piece of this is data entry form changes. So obviously there are some uh, uh, there are some elements that are going away and other new ones that are coming in. Uh, and so we will be going in and making changes to the state data entry form. Um, many agencies have custom forms that uh, often they've started with the state form. Uh, and made changes and adjustments uh, to suit the needs of their agency. Um, and uh, that's fantastic because it, it refines their workflows, but the problem there is that it breaks the link between the state form. So when we update the state form, if you have a custom form, those changes to the state form will not carry across to your form. So if you do have a custom form at your agency, uh, it will be necessary to create a new custom form with NEMSYS 3.5. And this is, this is something that uh, we're willing to work with you around uh, as we go through the transition process to make sure that this is as seamless and painless as possible. Um, but just, just be aware that that is on the horizon and that, that forms will be a part of those changes that need to happen. Um, so uh, uh, the other piece is providing training um, uh, whether that's having uh, folks attend uh, trainings from the state, providing in-house trainings to uh, personnel in your agencies um, to make sure that everybody is aware of what's changing and um, ways that these new data elements uh, uh, are going to impact the way you record data. Um, so um, just making, making a commitment to share the information around to everyone at your agency. Um, as, as, this, as this progresses. Um, billing. So there are many agencies that have billing integrations. Um, so the impact on billing at this point, it's, it's uh, um, you know, so there are ways to map between Nemesis 3.5 and 3.4, um, but, uh, you know, at this point, those integrations are uh, sharing 3.4 data. And so the question is, are uh, billing companies going to become NEMSYS 3.5 compliant? And so this is something that you might be, uh, in, you might want to uh, uh, inquire with your, your billing provider um, about uh, if and when they intend to move to NEMSYS 3.5 or to accept NEMSYS 3.5 data. Um, and so this will be th something we're thinking about on the state level in terms of um, how those exports can work uh, as well as as um, as this happens. And then um, you know just making sure that all of this sort of lines up so that you know when the time comes to you know to throw the switch and your agency is switching over that everybody is ready for it that uh, there will be minimal disruption to any operations. Um, as with with anything, any pro major project of this nature, there will be hiccups, um, but uh, we are really trying to keep that to an absolute minimum and have this be a seamless transition that, uh, um, uh, yes, that, that's, in any case, uh, next, next slide, please. Um, so one quick question that we have uh, is related to the uh, data entry form. And uh, as 
I mentioned before, this will uh, be one of the areas that's impacted by NEMSIS 3.5. Um, if you know, um, uh, if you could answer this uh, poll question, what uh, PCR data entry form do you use? Do you use the state uh, uh, form? Do you use a custom or um, custom form um, for your agency in Image Trend Elite, um, or do you use a, a form customized by your agency and a product other than Image Trend Elite, so a third-party vendor? Um, and uh, uh, if you use a stock form developed by your vendor. Peter and Josh, just Long know that there are uh, some people that uh, don't use um, a charting system. So you may not get the full nine ah. boxes. I was going to okay. say I should have added, and I don't know <laughs> to this list, I guess. So I'm seeing uh, um, custom forms from third party vendors as well as a cu custom forms in Image Trend Elite and one person. Uh, using the state form. Um, okay. Um, next slide, please. Um, so last but not least, uh, we wanted to share with you uh, um, some ways that you can get involved in this process um, and, and contribute to the improvements to the data system. Um, you know, one, one piece is making sure that you're communicating regularly with your vendor around any challenges. If you have a third, if you work with a third party vendor, uh, and there are data, data quality issues or anything of that nature, or if you have questions about what's happening with Nemesis 3.5, I would encourage you to have an active dialogue with your vendor. Um, the other piece is, uh, uh, giving feedback to, uh, to us, to the, the data team. Um, and um hang on where is oh oh i don't have the support request here um but uh here is and leslie if you can post this i'm i'm unable to post to the general chat uh that's not one of my options here but um um but yes uh reach out to us at, at the state uh, and send us uh, information and feedback. Um, and the other is through the uh, EMS data work group. Um, so this is this is a group of um, people from across the state. We're striving for uh, representation of the entire state and agencies of different sizes and, and, and types. Um, and uh, uh, we work with this data work group to share information about upcoming things that are being done with the data. And so it is a very down in the weeds sort of uh, uh, approach, but this is where um, uh, we, we get some guidance from uh, uh, EMS providers and folks in the field uh, uh, on our, our data initiatives. And um, we have a form, if you're interested in participating. Um, let's see. Yeah, Peter, do you have I'm, that link, or I could try to find it here too. Oh, I just I just posted it to the chat. Did you? Okay, great. We'll have you, Leslie you get that, that out. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. Actually, I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Oh, it's there. It's, it's there. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so, uh, if you're interested in participating. Like I said, we, we're trying to balance out uh, representation from all of the different regions of the state. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, submitting uh, your, your name through this worksheet doesn't guarantee that we'll, we'll bring you in, but we will keep people who are on uh, the list in mind as spaces open up on the data work group. Uh, and in particular, if you list areas of interest or expertise, um, when we have special projects related to that, we might uh, bring you in to to participate um, in in um, some of that work. So, um, so please, if you're interested, uh, uh, go to that uh, that web form and uh, submit your information. Um, and last but not least, 
here is the uh, uh, the EMS and trauma uh, global email. Are there any questions? We, gosh, we're <laughs> we only have four minutes, but uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. Yeah, and while we're uh, looking at questions, um, just a reminder. After you get off this webinar, I would recommend that you go to this page of the NEMSIS website and look up your vendor if uh, if you don't know where they are in terms of NEMSIS 3.5 compliance. If they're not on the list there, then check out that transition plan survey to see what, they're, what they've said their plans are. Well, thank you everyone for participating uh, today and uh, uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any further questions. Um, we're the uh, we're always here to help. Okay, I'm going to sign off on the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for participating, and thanks to Peter and Josh for a great presentation. I've certainly learned a lot about data. <laughs>